What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you another awesome moon moth species and what we are looking at today is called the Actias Ningpoana which is a moon moth that comes from Taiwan and China. And this moth basically lives in the a little bit more temperate but still almost subtropical regions of uh, China and Taiwan where they feed on various host plants such as rhododendrons but uh, also many types of fruit trees like pears, apples, etc. The moth is quite polyphagous and can also be raised in captivity on things like cherry and oak trees and is a good species for beginners. Now Actias ningpoana together with the Selene is actually one of the biggest moon moths uh, in terms of wingspan. However, the individuals in this video are actually dwarfs why this is, I don't know. I think it is the quality of the livestock. I think they have been inbred for several generations before I obtained the eggs. And this usually results in smaller individuals. I have seen uh, eggs from, uh, you know, I have seen wild individuals in museum collections. And some females are up to 19 centimeter, 20 centimeter in terms of wingspan. Uh, the female that I'm showing right now is much smaller. I think she is around 15, 16 centimeters in terms of wingspan, which is still uh, a big moth. It's by no means a small moth that I'm holding here, but it is a smaller version of a big moth if you catch my drift. It's a good species for beginners. Uh, very easy to raise generally with little losses. They will like rhododendrons a lot, cherries apples, anything from the rose family. I think they can also be raised on eucalyptus, on sweet gum, uh, liquid amber. So house plants is really no concern. Keep them on room temperature and they will thrive. Just don't overpopulate them. Now in this video I'm showing you a couple which is a male and a female and if you hold them together it's really easy to see the difference. Uh, males first of all are smaller than the female. Um, here currently we see a male and the male has very small and slender curved wingtips basically and also very plushy uh, antennas, very broad feathered antennas. Now the female, she is bigger than the male in terms of wingspan size but she has also more rounded wing edges and she has smaller antennas. So the male is actually the one who has to find the female in the wild. The female just sits still usually for several days waiting for a male. And the males has to do all the flying. So this is why males are a little more aerodynamic. They have more slender wings, you know, they almost look a little bit like a fighter jet. Uh, they're more agile, they are lighter, they don't have to carry so much eggs in their abdomen. So they can basically fly very fast and large distances compared to the females who are a little bit too fat and uh, heavy to fly efficiently. So this explains the differences in their shapes and overall size. So how do you tell Actias Ningpoana apart from Actias Selene? That's a question I've gotten a lot in my life. So first of all, we were going to review the most important differences between these two species. The biggest difference between these two species is the geographical locations. Actias Ningpoana, which is the species you're looking from right now, is from Taiwan and China. That's it. Okay. Actias Selene is from different countries. It is found in India, in Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, in Myanmar, in Afghanistan, in Bhutan, in uh, Nepal, in Thailand, in Vietnam. Okay. So if you get a moth from these countries, it is Selene. Actias Ningpoana comes from China and Taiwan. There's only one country where both species are found and that is China. Okay. Actias Selene and Actias Ningpoana are both found in China. However, Selene seems to be um, more on the south, while Ningpoana seems to occur more in eastern China. So Selene is a more heavily tropical species, while Ningpoana is found a little bit more northwards. And that means that um, in the south of China, especially around the borders of uh, tropical countries, you have Selene. And Actios Ningpoana is more in the east of China. Anyway, 
There's also a few visual differences, but the most important thing when it comes to identifying these moths is knowing where they come from. This is really important. Okay, if it's Taiwan or China, you have Ningpoana. Unless it's from the south of China, then it could be Selene. If it's from India, it's Selene. If it's from Bhutan, it is Selene. If it's from Vietnam, then you have a Selene, not a Ningpoana. Okay, get that through your mind. This is very important. The visual differences between Actias Selene and Ningpoana are also there in the morphology, but they can be hard to see. The biggest difference is in the eye spots. Actias Selene has pink eye spots. And Actios Ningpoana has white eye spots. And it's generally believed that um, Actios Ningpoana is a very pale moth and they have little to no pink scales on their wings. Actios Selene has pink on their hind wing tails and pink on their eye spots. Actios Ningpoana has no pink on their hind wing tails and no pink on their eye spots. However, there is a small warning here. There is, There can be small exceptions. Uh, in some cases, Ningpoana can have a little pink, but it's never it's never as noticeable as in Selene. So this is one way you can tell them apart. If you if you have a moth and it has no pink, it has white eye spots, it has white tails, then you can say this is Ningpoana. If it has a little pink, then you can be in doubt if it's Selene or Ningpoana, but then it's generally speaking you have a Selene. There's also some other countries where the species is recorded, but um, these are different species. For example, the moths from Indonesia and Malaysia and Borneo are now called Actias saitsi. The moths that come from the Andaman Islands in India are called Actias calandra. Actias calandra is actually a very rare endemic moth that's only found in the Andamans as far as I know. And visually it looks extremely different from both Ningpoana and Selena. The adults can be almost pale yellow. So it's probably very beautiful. Uh, probably no one is ever going to breed that one. But it's important to notice. However, in the rest of India, the individuals seem to be Actia Selene. Individuals from the Philippines are now known as Actias Brevi Juxta. The exact geographical locations of many of these species is not well defined and they may or may not overlap in some areas. Last but not least, some hybridized or bastardized stock of Selene and Ningpoana ex ex exists in captivity due to them being highly compatible and very similar and due to breeders misidentifying them and mistaking them for the same species. However, specimens or livestock from the wild should always be either Selene or Ningpoana and not hybrids but in captivity if you buy eggs from a random person sometimes they can be bastardized livestock there's also a lot of mistakes on the internet and in old books literature mixes up the species Selene and Ningpoana because they used to be the same species and this is important to know Ningpoana used to be a subspecies of Selene, called Actias Selene Ningpoana. Nowadays, people still identify them based on old books and old literature and labeled specimens and records. And thus, a lot of Ningpoana end up with the label Selene instead. Thus, it is not unthinkable to find many pictures of Selene on social media that are actually Ningpoana but also in books and museums, um, the moth can be commonly misidentified. Some people insist that they're Ningpoana or Selene, and that, or that they're Selene or Ningpoanas, and so forth, adding to a lot of confusion. Now, one warning if you follow the taxonomy I put in my video, it includes some species that were described on basis of DNA alone. So some of these names may actually be synonyms of other species, um, I just wanted to tell you about these moon moths and I don't plan to do an extensive video but take everything I said with a grain of salt because there's a lot of bullshit species being described on basis of DNA alone which is wrong but still according to the standard rules of taxonomy I have to mention them right now but it could be that later their names will be changed into something else.
I apologize for filming my videos indoors now. That's because it's slowly becoming winter and outdoors it's very dark and cold now. Which is not good for the animals and low quality lighting to film videos in. So this winter I'm going to film my insects indoors before moving back outdoors where the lighting will be better. I apologize for this. If you want to learn more about moths then consider supporting me on Patreon or read the description below my video to find other ways to help me. My YouTube channel is demonetized because YouTube is not supporting me and that means I run my channel for 100% on donations and crowdfunding. And your contributions help me improve the quality of my channel, do better and crazier things, more editing and also show crazier species. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe and goodbye.